We will call uh, December 5th, 2022, Management Services Committee to order. Okay. Is, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, maintenance supervisor report. Okay. I will attempt to do this uh, <laughs> chronologically. I think I want to keep that goal. I'm just going to, to give it to him. So. <laughs> I'll stop. Uh, let's see. Back to the beginning part of November, uh, when we're still having those 70 degree days, uh, I made it over to the animal control facility for a couple days and did a lot of cleanup over there. Um, all the sumac trees and stuff, I don't know if anyone has been over there and taken a look, but um, all the bushes got trimmed, all those sucker trees coming out from the foundation, got rid of all those. Um, underneath that sign, I took all that that brush and stuff out of there. And, you know, everyone knows the county acquired that. It's, I think it needs to look a little nice, you know, so um, I wanted to get over there and take care of that. And it was perfect timing weather-wise. It was kind of fun. Um, let's see, halls, they came uh, the second week of this past month and did a final mulching of the leaves, which is in their contract that they are to do that uh, spring cleanup and a, a fall mulch, and they did. They came over a weekend and got that done. And actually, uh, there was a brief salting we had to do when we had that little early taste of winter. Um, had to come over in the marble stairs for the courthouse, and there was some sidewalk spots we had to salt. I purchased a, as per our discussion for, uh, we've had many times, I purchased a vinyl cab that I ordered from McCullough's for the skid steer, and it's, uh, it's going to it's going to be nice because there's still no heat, but it'll keep the wind off you, and there's a door and everything. It'll be nice. And I also had to buy a battery for the skid steer. And I did find out some information on our current elevator contract. Um, we, where have this written down? Is this the new contract we're purchasing under? No, not yet. We haven't. We haven't purchased it. Not yet. And I have some info for you guys. Um, we, here we go. Urban Elevator Service is who the county used to have their contract with. And then back in 2005, Urban Elevator was purchased by Otis, and they purchased our contract as well. And back then in 05, we were paying just shy of $300 quarterly. It was $291. And now in 22, we're paying $28. <coughs> so in 17 years, that service contract has gone up $237 for a full service contract, which I know it stinks and money's money, but I didn't think that was that bad in almost 20 years to go up $237. And I have been in correspondence with uh, Otis and TK, and TK answered me back. I had emailed them requesting information on some options since they offer different types of maintenance agreements from full coverage and labor to just an oil and a grease where parts are excluded. Do you have a specific type you're looking for? And I responded back and told them, you know, pretty much similar to what we have now. And that was the end of September and I haven't heard anything since. And I've responded back again. And so I don't know if they're just disinterested or, and then Otis, who we currently have contract with, um, they got right back to me, and uh, on March 1st of 23, our contract is officially expired with them, but 90 days prior to the expiration date, we have to declare that we want out of that contract. So if we want to do something different here in the next month or so, we probably should figure that out. But in order to do that, I need to get some other prices from these other companies that for, I think it's kind of due to the fact in part that we're out here in like elevator purgatory. Um, between us and the hospital, I mean, where's the closest elevator? Kankakee or Riverside? I don't know. This might just be... No, what else? 
Well, yeah. I got one. Yeah. I guess St. Edmund's Church has one as well, so, yeah. Anyway, that's something we can mull around here in the next month or so. Okay. December, January, February, well, we're, we've got, we're getting close, aren't we? So, with that being said, then I guess I would need approval. How long is the contract for? I think it's three years. Um, I have all that info. And it's, she claims we're getting, she, her name is Sheila. Um, says we're getting a very good price for what our contract is. Now, whether that's the truth or not, I can't verify because once again, I can't, it seems I can't get anyone else to give me some options. Well, the question is if they won't respond to your email, are they going to respond to your request for service? I know. I know the grass is always greener, but it might be wise just to keep the security blanket we have now within the people that are familiar with our facility and whatnot. And if, if, go ahead. The people that you have now, where do they, where are they coming from? They come over from the Peoria area, and that's the same with TK Elevator. They come over from that. There's one in Champaign. They charge 160 bucks an hour, the one in Champaign, though. Okay. Who is that? Is it Kone? I, you know, I don't know. It's been years. So. Kone is the one that pretty much said that they didn't want, they're the ones who declined to bid on the Jack project that we have going. Okay. Um, and I know, speaking with Jeff Peterson, when he was the CEO of the hospital, that's who, who did the work for them at the hospital. They had a service contract with them. But I don't ask you here nor there. But. Oh, if we do get a three-year contract and then end up getting the elevator repaired, replaced, whatever we're doing, whoever puts that in then, I would assume would give us somewhat of a contract, so then are we able to get out of it? Or do we just ask for a one-year contract? Or That's my question. Can we get a one-year? I don't know. Because Otis knows that we're looking at getting something done, so I would think if we said, hey, you know, because we're in the middle of this project, do we, you know. Since your current contract expires, oh, I should let you guys read this. Your current contract expires August 31st of 2025. Then I've also attached on the contract Otis paper that would commence the next quarter on 3-1-23 for 175 a month. It's a little vague. I need to dig into I feel like I was unprepared for this or something all of a sudden. Well, it sounds like we've, that they're assuming we've already gone into, rolled over into the next. Yeah, which might be exactly what has happened with the whole 90-day thing. Yes. Even if you even if you keep going with the Otis contract, there's got to be language in there somewhere about termination. So, you know, if we get to the point six months from now that we want this other outfit that's repairing the elevator to, to take on, we can always terminate the contract with Otis. Yeah, there's an eight-page contract info. There's got to be some clause in there somewhere that talks about termination. Yeah. Every time Okay, so let me just keep you guys updated on that. If I find anything of utter importance, I can report it to the full board. Okay. And that meeting coming up. Okay, okay, moving on. Can I move on from that? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, what was mentioned at the last meeting as far as the trees up north here. Um, I had Marquee Tree Service come and do work. They were here two full days, and if you get a chance, um, drive over by those pines and get out and step in there. They removed any dead trees. There was six trees they removed, and every single dead limb 
from one end to the other they got rid of and it looks really nice and it's going to be it's when you walk in there it's just like oh yeah because if you started looking up those pine trees i mean there was just hundreds and hundreds of just small dead you know, from you to eye long white pine limbs up there that yeah it could be a hazard you know you get the public over there now and with the soccer but that's taken care of now and it looks really nice so I would suggest going and taking a look at that. Um, last couple things here. The maintenance shed has two door openers. I have Lemonager Construction and Garage Door Service coming to put a new opener in the one side. Um, 2001, the original openers, they're over 20 years old. Um, and the control board in the unit went out and he said he could try to find one on eBay for me. And I was like, no, can we just put a new unit in? He's like, yeah, I was hoping we'd say that. So we'll get a new unit in there. Um, just a lot of routine maintenance. I'll, I've gapped enough, I think, unless you guys just really like hearing my voice. Uh, we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the water incident, I'm sure you're all aware of the water main break uh, here in town last week. Um, there were three porta potties that were brought in just for. Know, emergency but shortly after that you knew this is how these things work you know the porta potties were no more here a half an hour when the water came back on so but we had to do something especially with the jail because we hadn't had water for several hours normally when that happens I will get a lot of toilets and urinals that the Sloan valves will plug up or go bad and I didn't have that this time I was prepared I went to Plum Mart I bought a half a dozen of each and so now I have a bunch on the hand. Um, that's pretty much all I have, guys. So if you have any questions for me. Um, uh, uh, no, let me, I got to take this. Um, why don't we go on to her report? Mine? Okay. Yeah. Um, I have some farm report documents for you guys. I'm Stephanie Spiros from Walker Place. Do you guys want one as well? Yes. yes. Super. Can you give one to Lyle too if you want? Like? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Go on. So, um, I thought it would be a good idea to, to bring this information in front of the management committee because I know in the past um, there's been questions about what we do, um, how the year was, and, and of course there's yield requirements per the, per the lease. And I know as a committee um, that, that you sometimes get questions um, from others um, as to, well, what's going on? I just felt that it would be um, a good mode of uh, communication to just give you our full report. And I can, I'd like for you to start on the left side of your, of your folder with the case. Um, that's our seating. So each field um, is represented and we have a name for each field. Um, and that basically is telling you the seating rate and, um, and the variety of corn that we planted this year. So each field is represented. You can see the, an average on each page of 39, like I'm looking at page two, um, that's 39,000 plants or seeds per acre. And then um, the variety is a decalb variety up um, in the left, uh, on the column to the left, you can see that, we, and you can see when we planted it. So this gives you a full scenario of what happened during planting season and how the, the, each field was planted. So you can take a look at that. Um, the next report that you can look at is the application report on the right side. Um, again, it's it's a report that's GPS, um, and it tells you the date the product as well as the rate of the product that was applied um, during the growing season. So this happened after planting. You can see 
Um, the first, I'll just start with the first one. We, the field was uh, the northeast field, and we applied. We call it Lily because it's um, that's our um, our ammonium, our nitrogen source comes from Lily. It is a co-product uh, from their uh, diabetes insulin. Um, manufacture. So they, in Indianapolis, they manufacture insulin at the Lilly, um, at the Lilly Pharmaceutical uh, Factory. And with that production comes a co-product that is a 14% nitrogen solution. And that's all it is, is water and 14% nitrogen. And we have the contract with Lilly and we truck that into our tank near Danville. And then we apply it to all of our cornfields. Um, in addition to that, we have a starter program with the planter. So we put nitrogen down also with the planters. And then, um, and then we add product to our fungicide um, when we go to spray. So there's three nitrogen applications. Instead of doing it all at one time, um, we have found that it's a better, um, it's a better process and better for the soils to actually spread the nitrogen applications into three separate um, times. The most interesting report that, that I um, see in this booklet is the harvest report. And I think it, I'm gonna spend a little extra time with this one. And I, and I think, first of all, I'd like to um, make the statement that uh, at the bottom, you'll see the average yield on each field. Um, and that this year, and we have farmed uh, the county farm several years, um, this year was a record corn year um, for us. And I think that's the case in a lot of, in the, in the area itself. And, um, and I thought about this a couple times, well, why? What, what was different about this year that made um, a, a record year on the county farm? And my opinion is, as we know, there are some significant wet areas in the farm, and I think there's been discussion about tile. And I think because we had a dry year, that the farm held the moisture and was able to still get moisture to the plants because of the soil and the, and the lack of tile in some areas. And then during pollination, we just happened to get that beautiful timely rain that then created um, the record yields that we that we saw. So you'll see like on um, the south, what we call the southwest field, uh, 226 bushels to the acre, and those are dry bushels. Uh, 225 on the southeast, <coughs> what we call Watsika South, 199. And that's interesting because look at um, the, the, the graph or the, the color coded here you'll see that you can see the wet areas on this field. So I think this map, if you're communicating with, with tile guys or people that will be um, installing uh, drainage for the farm, I think that you'll want to, to definitely share with them these maps, these harvest maps, because they really pinpoint the problem areas. Like, look at what Sika North, um, uh, I think it's page three, Watsika North, you can you can see in the northeast corner, you have a significant wet hole there that held held moisture and therefore um, didn't produce as much. Um, it was less than 140 bushels an acre in that specific area. The farm still averaged 228, but um, you know I would venture to say that if if it had a little more consistent drainage that maybe it would have yielded even more. So um, this, I believe, is will, will provide you the yield information necessary per the contract. Um, and basically, I, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys might have um, about the when year. You, when you harvest it, what, what was your moisture? You know? Uh, it tells you right here, 16.4 oh, okay. yeah. on the first page. Um, That's out of the field. That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Is, um, 
Watsika North, that wet spot, is that the corner over here by the courthouse that's always sitting wet? Um, so, so. Watsika North is, is this one right uh -huh. here. Right, that runs so. alongside the south edge of the courthouse, and there's always a. So, yeah, it sets like this. Right. This is the, the big white area that goes in there. That's where the trees are over here. And if you've ever walked out there, it's a swamp in there. So, um, oh, this is the wet hole. This is the, the white spot is the courthouse. Okay, so the courthouse is going to be probably in this area. Right here would be the admin building. Okay, right here. Yeah. So then the, so you go the down admin building the here, the courthouse would be probably here. Point again. Oh, sorry. Admin building, courthouse. Huh. Okay. So this wet spot, this big red spot, is back here somewhere. Yes. See, I was looking for the one that's over. Yeah, that one doesn't look that. Bad. You know, when you look at it, but. They did just fix that tile over in that area too. The city wants to Yeah, in the last year or so, so that may have helped for this year. Have you been filled in on the decision we made about tiling? I have not. We get per the courtesy of the update. Um, we did. We approved it. Now they, they, I assume they got a hold of you about um cost because we told them they, <laughs> if it was done with the crop on there that they would have to pay for the crop i know one of them said they got a hold of you to get no they didn't get any I have, prices. I, have, I haven't been reached out by, by anybody who okay. has contacted it's me about tile work um yes i uh I know we, that we were asked not to work the ground. Right, um, and I don't know if they've been out there spread or not. And that's fine. Actually, it works into our program because we wouldn't have worked the ground because it's going to beans next year. Okay. So, um, so that that um, I, when I communicated that to our crews, um, they said no worries. But we weren't. Our intent was not to work half fall tillage on that farm anyway. So then. When the lime gets spread, if it hasn't been, you'll just work it in in the spring? Yes. Okay. Right. So no, neither one of them, because we had two that bid on it, and both of them had provisions in it for paying for the crop if that was damaged, but they never reached out to you to how much that would be. Because they don't know what the yield have been or anything like that. So it's, so let me ask you this: Have they already tiled it? No. No. Okay. <laughs> so there hasn't been any damage. No, but the way it's looking, it will probably be done next summer. Okay. So that's where the tile work's gonna be done next summer. Well, that was an option. Okay. And so that's why they were supposed to figure in crop damage to pay to the tenant. Interesting. On October thirty first, we approved the bid to Henrik's. In the amount of $109,500. And I, I assumed because they had it in there that they had reached out to you to get some kind of a figure on what the crop damage price might be. Well, maybe they're going to, but next summer's yeah, always I mean, off. Maybe it's, that's a it, it, project. It's possible, and, and you know, they won't <coughs> know what that cost would be necessarily because I don't even know what it is for next right. for next crop year. I mean, I have a general idea, but I wouldn't have a specific amount um, right. uh, that uh, for damages right. in, in the crop. Um, and, and by I'm making them curious, though, I, I'm, I, we do our own tiling. So, so, but I've not ever known tile work to be done extensive tile work to be done in the middle of a growing season. Well, and, and it, they've been given a year to do it. So, okay. I mean, they may do it in the spring. Okay. I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, that was, but there was supposed to be a provision in there for crop damage. That way, if they have to pay for crop damage, they're going to minimize it. Sure. So, <coughs> and I'm sure they figured that into the cost, but it's still. Did we provide contact information? 
And I know I did for at least one of them. Did the, how about the one we gave the bid to? I, you know, all they had to do was call. I don't remember. Maybe we need to do a follow up. Well, I mean, it's been long enough ago that I don't remember. I know. I know one of them, and I can't tell you which one had gotten contact information. I think that was the one that didn't get the bid. It could be. So um, I think we should do some follow up with them and to make sure we're all on the same page. Maybe see where we are on the um, agenda, the timeline for them to work, and then we could um, share that information so we're all. Yeah, because I mean, informed they, had the same information. They, can you can you share with me what exact what kind of tile work you're going to be doing? Is it a system tiling? Because um, a hundred thousand that would be oh, probably less yeah. than a thousand less than. Um, Basically, basically, the main tile that follows the waterway type thing. It's in the is um, south field. I forget what you named it, but um, you had it. It's the one the south field. The south the field. one that I the one that I showed you was so wet that crossed up with Route One. Right oh, the Route One. Okay. <laughs> um, so. So southwest, southeast, those are, those, are, those are on the south side. And then there's what, what we call Watsika South. You can, we can clearly see that some um, yield issues. It's, it's where? It's across from the county farm. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know how to describe it. But, yeah, I mean, it's where there's been issues with that main tile in the past, and so they're going to run the main tile and tie the feeders that are there back into it. Okay. And they may... So there's only one field then that you're, that yes. you're tiling? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can't afford to do more than that. And you think that it's, it, or you're... Picture the four corners, Route 1, and then the crossroad um, of the county road, we call the county farm road. We call, we call that southwest, southeast, and then north, uh, we, we, use, we use the compass to, to right. identify. We have southwest, southeast, and then we have, I think, New York. Well, it goes from Route 1 and then in through um, Northeast. Um, the landlord next door is um, is uh, cheese and weed. <laughs> yes, thank you. Crab tree. Crab tree. And and it will actually go in across his field to the main. So and they're supposed to take out trees along the, the fence row. Make sure there's no roots that grow back. Do, do you mind if I uh, just pull up the map so that you can, so we can be a little more specific can, in which field it is? We can try that. Okay, let's do that real quick. Do we have a so, copy of that um, bid here so we can tell her what? I thought I had it in my article folder and I guess. So... Can you get your hands on it? Okay. So we can tell her what materials and everything we decided on. No, I don't think it's good. I can go find it. So this is what we call south southwest. This is southeast. I'm sure the southwest has to be southwest. There's crab tree right there. It needs to be a standout in every group. There's County Farm Road. Okay, so we have we we have this one right here. That's what we call Southwest. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Is that the one that you? That well, it goes from Route One over to Crab Trees. 
So that it, would be it. It would have to be it. That has to be it. And it, it'll follow along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it then. It's the south. What we call the southwest. It's the first page. The first page of the packet. That's the farm that you're going to be tiling. Then. Okay. And I thought somebody would have yeah. reached out, and I thought you were informed of something. Um, yeah, I think we definitely need to put that on the to-do list to follow up with the because contract. right there should be a lot of, of, of communication between us because as as they finish up you know we'll want to know the timing of that because we'll want to come back and work the ridges right um, of of the tile installation so we'll, we'll try to time the planting and the and the field work with them. So that so that we um, it can be done immediately following the completion. Hope assuming that it gets done this spring before planting. Right. <coughs> and, and technically, it could get done next fall too if the crop gets off and they get. You know, okay. Does that got a map on any of them? I don't match with any of them. More maps. Yeah, but I have the legal description. The projected start date July, July, July 1. Completion of September. So that would be during the crop. And there's your legal description. Section 3, southwest quarter of southeast quarter of section 3, and the east 30 acres of southeast quarter of southwest quarter of section 3. That's clear as mud, right? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't have the section numbers. Right, we'd have to but, get. But the, the one that I pointed to you is adjacent to Crabtree. Yeah. And so it's on the southwest corner of the intersection of County Farm Road and the yeah. one. So, looks like we're going to have to have you in here more often just so you know what's going on. No, no I just, uh, I'm happy to just give you my yearly report. <laughs> so. Now, if you, um, but feel free to reach out to me anytime you do have questions or concerns about um, the operation of, it, of the farm itself. Um, you know, these reports um, are always available, so if you need um, additional, let me know. Okay. But um, that should, if anybody has questions about about applications, application rates, or uh, particularly the, uh, and most obvious, the yields, then then you have them at your fingertips. She asked about. Materials. So why don't why don't we give her the specs of um, what we decided on? We decided on a recycled they, product. Well, they can use recycled or new. Uh, um, and the size was eighteen inches. I believe the main was eighteen. Yeah. And they're going to crush the feeders. That aren't being used. No, they'll tie the feeders tie, in. Tie don't. the feeders in, but what are they going to crunch they're, the old tile? They're going to make sure the old tile is no longer functional. Okay. At least they're supposed to. Anything else in there? I can't remember. So. New tile hook onto existing tile on the west side of Route 1. West approximately 4,200 feet to the ditch. This work can be done during the summer. Average depth of the tile is four to six feet. Tile will be 18 inch narrow slot smooth core with gaskets and may be recycled or virgin material as appropriate with sandy soil. The contractor shall use stone or appropriate material around outlet pipe. The contractor shall remove trees and fence line for 100 feet north and south of Maine. Trees will be removed from the property. So if they don't take them off the property, let us know because they're supposed to. Okay. Contractor may install new main on one south or north side of old main, then run a sub main along the opposite side of the trench to find existing tiles and hook them in. Contractor may also install a new main on one side north or south of the old main, then run a naked trench along the opposite side, find all existing tiles and hook them across to the new tile. Contractor must specify which option they are bidding. Existing main must be dug up every 100 feet and crushed. 
tile should be installed and backfilled in a manner that reduces chance of tile deflection or crushing. Contractor shall hook up all existing stringers to new tile. Contractor shall install an 18 inch catch basin on the west side of road and head of waterway. Contractor will reimburse tenant for damage to crop. Fields shall be left in a manner that is farmable. Contractor shall provide an as-built map of new tile with stringer locations. Okay. So if they leave trees on there, or if they leave it in a way that's not farmable, let us know. Okay. <clears throat> and with beans, I don't know how much damage. I mean, yeah, you'll get some damage. But you can see more what's going on in a bean field instead of getting lost in a cornfield. So, all right. Do, do you, you have any other? Do you plan on farming beans, putting beans out there next? Yes. Okay. I know you got all corn. We had all corn last year, and we were going to rotate to beans okay. next year. That's why we don't have it worked. Do you have any other questions on the tiling, or? No. Just hoping that they reach out to me some point we will reach out to them and All right. tell them to be in contact with you so that you guys can plan too sure so. all right anybody got any other questions comments all right all right thank, thank you. you thank you thanks for coming thanks. discussion on animal control building and more No, we can't because one thing with the animal control building that we need to discuss is it's no longer an animal hospital, so the sign probably needs to be made to state that it is. Let me put that down. <laughs> I'll talk so, to, uh, I will uh, talk to Kirk. I wouldn't go too far with that. Okay. What? With a sign? Mm -hmm. Well, it needs to not say animal hospital. Right, you just take the sign down. <clears throat> no. We can take it out. I just said don't go too far away with it because it may become an animal hospital. Oh, well, fine. Well, could, can we use the existing sign and just have it re-lettered? I, I don't really want to uh, announce that that's the okay. It's just better to cover it up yeah. than remove it. Less problems. There's We've had no reason for public access to that place, except that somebody's picking up an animal. We could just put Iroquois County on the sign. Or you can leave it blank. I don't care. Well, I don't know. I guess we need to find out whether it's going to be an animal hospital again. Get me all excited over here. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Sure, you have something to say? Well, as far as that, as far as that goes, uh, the thing that we're trying to make more progress on, and, and from an initial point of view, is to get the building floodproofed. And unfortunately, this past month has not yielded the results anywhere near what I had anticipated it would. So I really don't have much to tell you about it, other than I'm continuing to fight the battle with trying to get an engineer lined up to come and work with us on that. So. So that being the case, uh, I think right now the building is, is serving its purpose as far as housing the animals that uh, are picked up or whatever obligations we have from the county standpoint. So I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just continue with the other parts. Um, just. Uh question of how things are operating, what happens to the waste? To any sort of waste that we pick up, they dispose of. Um, do we need to, when we do our um, waste disposal bid with here and Oh, I already took care of that. Um, they, I have right now. We're kind of seeing how much we need picked up with um, Kane Key disposal. I um, 
went ahead. I didn't sign any contract or anything. Um, they put a dumpster out there, and right now we're doing pickup twice a month. Um, see how that goes, and, and if we need more, I can always add on more, but it's uh, $55 a pickup, so um, I thought that was pretty reasonable, so. Well, and Key is who we have it with. Yep, that's who our current contract is through. Um, so I went ahead and contacted them and had them add on that as well. Um, when does that contract? Um, that. that contract is in 2024, I believe, but I will tell you here in just a minute. Okay. So there's a bill for 169.47 under animal control. Oh, can we talk about the corner? The corner has a call off the cliff and he has to get to. It. Okay. Go ahead. We'll get back to the animal. I passed around. I believe you all have a copy of this report mm -hmm. that I put together about the status of where we are in our search for a home for the more we've located. Actually, over the course of the past several months, we've found three locations that might work. Uh, we, we were six, uh, October was it when we went up to Clifton to look at Roxy's Cafe and uh, assessed the condition of that building found I believe that it would be suitable. However, there was a number of things that need to be done to get that building in a condition that we would want it to be in in order to inhabit it. And I've listed most of those things there. We have received a, a proposal that uh, I for some of the repair work and uh, I guess that's something that I have if we're going to be serious about that location, we, we may want to get a price from someone else, or we may, which I think we should, but also make sure that it's comprehensive. But we do have a proposal for some of the work. Okay. It's Matthew remodeling. So. Can you pass that around? Sure. The next location that we have on your list is in Crescent City. Um, this is a building that uh, is located a couple blocks south of the Casey's gas station there in, in Crescent City. Uh, I think that what I've got listed down there is more or less self-explanatory as far as the building itself. Um, we have a photograph of the building. I do. Uh, that uh, you can look at. I think it would be helpful for you to get an idea of what, what we're looking at. This is for Gordon Clifton. Building Crescent City, I would say, from my experience in, in buildings and homes, and that is a very unique building. Okay. It's more like a garage with an apartment on top of it. Is somebody living there now? Yes. It's just being rented because her her house is being built here in the edge of Watsika and it's not done, so she's going to be getting out in January. Is it in a residential neighborhood? Across from the road is, uh, I've contacted the mayor. He said he didn't see a problem, but across from the road is St. Peter's mm -hmm. um, construction. So. Is that going to be large enough for you, Bill? Yes, it will be. Yeah. Because it's half the size of the others. Right. right. It is um, the other ones are the other ones are kind of the other ones are kind of um, big, but like like I told John, it's hard to find a place that's perfect mm -hmm. for us without building. So Rosie's is one hundred and nineteen and needs twenty eight thousand in. Yeah, and then it's got and then there's about seven thousand in garage doors because there's two garage doors that needs to be replaced too on Roxy's. So thirty five on Roxy's. Yeah. Now the only thing and, and, and that does not include deciding on the building. That's probably the biggest item of expense as far as renovating that building is concerned. The, uh, the and one thing when we started on this, Roxy's was I would thought was going to be a nice location because our autopsies were being done in Kankakee. Well, now our autopsies we're having to go to Champaign because our Kankakee pathologists are too busy so I'm going to Champaign so 
the other night when I got called out at one o'clock in the morning, we had to go to Thawville. So it's a lot of driving as far as one in the morning from Thawville up to Clifton, from Clifton back home. Then the next day, if we have to do an autopsy, up to Clifton, down to Champaign, then back up to Clifton to drop them off after the autopsy. <laughs> and then when they find out what funeral home we go to, then it'd be drive back up to Clifton, let the funeral home in, so they, and then drive back. So the Clifton location is, I mean, it's not ideal because of all, a lot of traveling. It was when we first found the building because we couldn't find anything else. Um, so keeping in mind the goal to be fairly accessible to the interstate was, was one of your criteria, right? Well, it was. I mean, it, it's nice because a lot of, you know, when we have an accident on the interstate or something, it was right there. But, um, you know, I will admit some of my guys have helped me there. <laughs> and they're complaining because of the driving late at night and everything. And, and, and I don't blame them, you know. So, um, excuse me, go ahead. But uh, the thing is, is the one at the place in Crescent, um, it's move-in ready. Uh, there's, the only thing we'd have to do is run a two, 220 line to the cooler, put the cooler in, we're ready to go. It doesn't need painted. It, the people that own it take excellent care of it. Um, then the one here in Watsika, John's going to talk about, he wants to kind of rent it back to us. My goal is to move my office out of the basement to the location where it's at to free up some space for the county because they need office space. Um, the only thing is if we wait on the one in Watsika, um, I probably won't be able to move my office out of there for three or four years until he decides to retire. So we're, so we're not... That, that's, yeah. that is a situation that actually changed. I did have some conversations with him on Saturday. Oh, okay. And what he informed me then was that he had just learned that one of his major suppliers up in Wisconsin has sold their business to another company, and that company is no longer going to do any business in Illinois. So he said, it is, he said, I would have a lot more areas available for you people. Oh, okay. Or there's needs for spaces to be greatly reduced either way you want to look at it. Okay. So, I need, I do, I need to get going, John, yeah. so I'm, so anyway. But, so you kind of like the Crescent City location? I do, because it, it is moving, I already it is, it is moving. Uh, the only, the only problem that we ever have is uh, John, I mean, it's got a bathroom and everything, it's up on the second floor. So, I mean, you know, that's the only issue that we can think of. But, I mean, for the public to actually come there is, it's not that often that that happens. So, and that wouldn't be hard to put one down the stairs. If, if we need, if, if need, to. need be, but I think if I told the family, you know, that, that's coming, I'm like, you know, just to be aware, our restroom is up on the second floor, so, you know, um, it's not really made for, you know, it's, it's just what it is, you know. So, anyway. The picture you showed us is the one <coughs> It's, what's that? Is the one in Crescent? Yeah. And he's and I did ask him. He originally said 225. He's willing to go to 210. That would be his. That would be his bottom bottom line. And then for just so you guys know, which is not on here, you're probably for your cooler racks and everything. You're probably looking at somewhere around twenty thousand. To um, furnish it. Yeah, for the. Well, the nice thing about the Crescent location is there's going to be a soft slop sink washer and dryer that's going to be left there. So that's already, you know, in case we have blood cleaned up or anything, it will already be the there. The price of that cooler would be for any one we bought. Yes, any one you bought, you're going to look at probably another 20000 for for the cooler. So. Is there room in that facility to add the freezer that we've been talking about? Which, yes, in, in Crescent, yes, there would be room to add a freezer if we if we see fit. Have, have you visited these locations? Yes, I have. So, um, is the committee going to take a look at them? It's entirely possible if that's what you'd like to do. Well, we did look at Clifton. I don't know who's, John's not here, Paul's off the committee. Basically, it's us and John. Does the committee know Okay. Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah. thanks, guys. Well, 
along with what the coroner wants. Well, that's what I'm thinking too. He well, seems I, happier I, I, with that. I don't one. agree with you entirely. No, okay, because and I think price? if you look at if you look at the bottom one, there's more to more to the story which we haven't talked about. But from what I understand, the guy's going to stay there for three years. At the three place. years, and yes. just we just get part of it, right? But we own the whole building. Yes. So tell us where you start. Well, the rest of it. The rest of it has to do with, with our needs for space. The size of government is increasing. Who needs space? We do. I mean, Iroquois County you, government. Us. I understand, but specifically, what, what are you thinking? Well, the sheriff has needs for more space. He's already identified those. So the, Judge Sable has a need for more space. He's identified that. That's part of the reason why Bill said he wants to move his offices out of the courthouse. Yeah, I heard you. Okay. I'm trying there's to a trend. Out. There's a trend, as I think we're all aware, that the size of government is increasing. We may not like that or agree with that, but that seems to be what's happening. And if we're forced to find more space, a place like this offers that option. It's 2,800, 2,900 square feet, not 1,200. Let me give you some more particulars, okay? The, the, the building was, as you can see, was built in 1938. Interestingly enough, it's owned by this Bert Capers who runs Ileana. He's a nice man, does good work. He's done a lot of work here for the town. When he retires, in three years or so, it's going to be another hole in the county, just like we have with animal control by not having a bed. So that's that's necessarily not entirely our problem, but then again, I think we do have some responsibility in trying to find a way and a means of serving the citizens of the county with something like that, which is a valuable and necessary service. So I don't know how that's going to be handled because he's tried over the past several years so have people come to work for him with the idea of, of being an apprentice and learning how, learning the business and then taking over so it's it's a business that you have to be certified by the state in order to run however there's no there's no schooling or anything that you can go to to learn how to be a locksmith sounds kind of crazy and i agree but that's that's the story that i'm getting the other thing that's interesting about this building is that Mr. Caper purchased the building four years ago in 2018. He paid $50,000 for it. So now he's asking one seventy-five. How many years ago? Four years ago. He's done a lot of work in the building. If you go there, you can see that he's, he's upgraded a lot of things in the building. He's added a lot to it and so forth. However, I can't tell you what the building is worth, and I haven't tried to negotiate with them. Right. So I don't know where we can go with it. But I think it offers a lot of potential if we're interested in having some space available to handle future expansion. And also, it's also a source of revenue. When he pays his rent? Yes. Okay. And as he pointed out when I had some initial discussions with him, that the rent, you know, if you, whatever purchase price you agree upon, then he's going to be paying rent, so they're actually maybe buying it for less than, yeah. less, less than that. That's negotiable. So, the other thing is too, uh, and I understand where Bill is coming from, Crescent City is fine, I, I think it will work, uh, if that's what we want to do. I think, I don't think that we necessarily have an obligation to do what the coroner wants, however, I think we have to take into consideration what's best for the county. And that's the reason why I'm saying that maybe this other building has some potential that we ought to take a little closer look at. What kind of a location is it in? It's, it's right on Highway 24. When you cross the railroad tracks right going west, the it's the right there. It's immediately on your right. Oh, next to the dodge. Dodge. Next to the it used to be a restaurant. Hungry House. No, it used to be owned. It used to it was be a restaurant. Nichols, no, it was Nichols Paint and Fab. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was a restaurant. No, be, no, it wasn't. Before that, it was occupied by Big R. 
Before that, it was a restaurant. <laughs> that's the one. That must be before my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> the hungry guys. When I was in high school. Yeah. Is that in a floodplain? No. It's not in the floodplain. That street that runs along Mitchell. What's that street that runs along? Always floods. Isn't oh. that at the end of that street? The street that runs along the side of the railroad tracks yes. as gets water in it occasionally, yes, but there's I'm told there's never been water got anywhere near this building. Well, I just did some cursory very quick. The, the other thing that you might want if you're considering floodplain is the building in Crescent City is in the floodplain. Well, that's really. interesting to know. And the ditch, the flood ditch runs right along the south border of the property. Um, I saw all of that. the drains, all the drains from the four drains and the gutter drains go into a big common pipe that goes out under the under the lawn, out in the back, and enters and in, empties into that ditch. That's what Crescent has for their sewage system. And yeah. this is another thing with Crescent City that if you, we purchase that property, we'll have to make arrangements for mowing. There's a big lawn there. These are things we need to know. So I just did some. I think I think from what Bill told me, he did make some arrangements with the mayor that they would probably plow the. It's more of an alley that runs right in front of the place, but I guess the, if the city was going to plow that when there's snow, that might not be sufficient. The, the concrete approach into the garage doors is something that Bill or somebody else would have to clear away. That's the distance of a car, probably 20 feet or by. 35, 40 feet. Aren't we going to have that at any facility? We would have had it at Ro We would have it at Rosie's. We would have it at this. I mean, we're, we're going to have walks and a drive on any location. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not familiar with what arrangements they are for fire snow removal goes over here at, at, in the Watsika place, but there's no lawn mowing. There's definitely no right. grass anywhere there. So that's. One, one consideration. Well, I did some just really fast cursory math here based on the asking prices and square footage. And Roxy's comes out to 6160 per square foot. The Crescent location comes out to $175 per square foot. And the um, what's the property comes out to $60.76 per square foot. So that middle one in Crescent City really sticks out there as a higher square footage cost. So going back in time, Actually. we had looked at some in Anarga, and we were, it was said that there were too big for what we needed, but now we're being told that we're going to be needing more space for a lot of people. Um, why was it that we decided that they wouldn't work in Narga and it would be the, so, so Mitchell knows, the funeral home there and you know where Shane's building is on the corner? Mm -hmm. Those were two that we looked at. We didn't, we didn't look at Shane's. Well, it was, we know where it, is. it was offered. Yeah. And it still is available. Yes. So was the funeral. So why why did we I, I can tell you what my opinion or feelings are, if that's what you want to know. My feelings about the funeral home in Onarga is yes, it's way too big and it's just the way it's constructed. It's not it's got a real big garage in the back and and in the, in the area where the funeral home itself would would take a lot of remodeling if you were gonna put offices in there and, and whatnot. So well, the property picture that he showed me in Crescent City is a lovely piece of property. It's move-in ready. It's in the center of the county. It's got the highest square footage costs. But again, same as animal control, that drainage ditch, that's what, how Crescent City drains the whole town. Um, they don't have a sewer system over there. And I don't believe that they're in business by property and floodplains. How much space would uh, Capers need to rent? I mean, how much are we going to lose by when, when we When we talked with him, 
Bill was outlining how much space he would need. Okay. Okay, and that was no issue. Kirk was more than comfortable with that. He could. He had a few pieces of equipment that he might have to move and so forth, but they, he was no. Uh, didn't he have could work the space that we would allow him to have. Right. If you know where the overhead door is on the building, mm -hmm. that's, that's where Bill would want to locate so that he uh, have access. And there was plenty of room going behind that door for him to back in. There was plenty of room for him to have his cooler and whatnot. Yeah. It was a large paint shop at the north end of that building. And uh, that's, uh, he wouldn't be infringing in that, but what he would be coming up uh, to that. So he probably, what, what probably would have to be done, what Bill's idea was to, he would put like a, something like this folding door here, or just a curtain that he could pull across when somebody came to view a body. The, the only thing I think of, that I can think of that we would need to do for sure in that building or want to consider would be something in terms of putting in air conditioning. There are some things that Bert has already done at the far north end of the building to prepare for that, but I can't tell you exactly because I didn't get into that in depth with him, so I'm not sure how, how far he's gone. One of the things we've always talked about is ventilation and exhaust. Is there any kind of exhaust system there? There is, but I can't tell you the, all of the details on it. There's a lot of overhead venting for that is heat and, and exhaust as well. The other thing is, is this this is a con in my book for this third Watsika property is it's very public there. It's very um, heavily eyes traveled, on. lots of eyes on it. Um, on the other hand, I guess probably would be harder to mess with the building, maybe not visible, but. Uh, and, and I suppose it depends on, on what our definition or to, uh, is, what the building is should be. Is there a garage door where he can back in? Yes, it's there's, on the I, east side of the building. Okay, I think right on the road. I would like to go and visit this property. Okay. The committee as a whole to go and visit this property and look at it. I'm going to schedule that for the next meeting. The next management meeting? Yes. Or do you want to do it sooner? With the holidays coming up, I guess that I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how much sooner we'd be able to. Uh, next management meeting is on January, the holiday, January 2nd. Right? Oh, I hope it's not this year. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, right. January 2nd will be the next. There's December 29th is the next PNP meeting, so it must, oh. be, must be January 2nd, which you will know, be a I'm, holiday. I'm probably. Is a holiday? Second is a holiday because the so, first because is a Sunday, so we don't. Mm -hmm. I'm landing in Midway at midnight on the first, so I don't want to come to the management <laughs> on Does this. Does Midway know you're doing that? <laughs> yeah, Midway, yeah, they got my money. So we need another date for management in January. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, that's not on your agenda today, but that's something you need to talk about today. Well, and that's something that the chairman sets with the. Uh, after talking when, with holidays yeah yeah that's the chairman can do that i mean we usually discuss it and make sure everybody's okay with it but we're going to we have, have to move the arca meeting then too <clears throat> so all right um mr dukoff yes a relevant factor in the morgue since your arpa money is what's paying for it right what how much is set aside for that. We didn't really set anything to aside yet for it because we didn't know where it was going to be. Um, that's why we were trying to keep it around that hundred thousand dollar mark, and that's where we found the opportunity in Clifton, also down in Gilman. What was that price for that? Or not Narga, the one we went and looked at together. The that was the funeral home one. Yes, I don't remember what that was. Seventy-five. That was seventy-five thousand. But that was too much building for us. It was an upstairs and a downstairs, and we would have no use unless. But you know, John's saying now the sheriff's going to need more room, and if if he's got people, at, you know, where we've got the 
Can they use that for a headquarters then maybe in Anarga since maybe. we have officers there? You know, they're gonna well, here's, here's the thing about some of the space requirements, for example, and I think the sheriff outlined some of this. The DCFS has had a situation where the one of their officers was killed in Springfield, and so now they're trying to institute a policy statewide where any time they go out, they can have a deputy accompany them. And so there may, and I can just see this morphing into he's going to need another deputy. There may be some. Excuse me, some need for office space just to accommodate that, that situation. And Judge Sable's already <coughs> got this deal where he's got some kind of special bailiff now that needs right. office space as well. So <clears throat> these are some of the kinds of things that to me seem to be forming a trend. We know with, we Spring, we know with Springfield being right now under a super majority of the Democratic Party that we're probably going to be getting all kinds of things thrown upon us that uh, we may not particularly like or approve of, but they're I just think they're going to happen. That to me is one of the, one of the advantages of, of the place at, at, in Watsika, the Lock Service Building, is the fact that it's in Watsika I think has some benefit versus a place like Onarga, depending on who's going to occupy the space and what their purpose and role is. This place in Watsika also offers space depending on how it was to be utilized, but going forward if we had a flood and we weren't able to use the animal control building, we could probably house the dogs there. It's a problem, it's a problem that we have and the city has that if we have another flood of the magnitude that we've had in the past and we need some place to house the pets temporarily, where are they going to go? Last time they went out here to the plaza, that place is not available anymore. I believe it's all that space is all occupied right now. At least that's the last I was told. But even if it is or isn't, that you can't count on that. Is there a way, you know, we can't have the animals and the humans, um, is there a way that that can be separated so we don't run into what Jill's informed us about previously? What do, you, what do you mean by separating animals and humans? Well, we can't have the animals with the decedents. Why are you telling them apart? We, we can't have them in the same room. They, they can't be in the same room. Right. They could be in the same building. So there would be separation. You're talking about the animal control building, Donna? Well, we're no. If, about if the property we're talking about. If which is, which, is morgue, which one? Morgue. morgue. The, the Illinois animal locksmith? I. So I something that's ridiculous. Yeah, but like John said, he paid $50,000 for it four years ago. Right. And I have figured it out. Now for him 100 grand. Per square foot, <laughs> yeah, right. the present city crisis is ridiculous. Had that conversation, so and I don't know what negotiations will yeah. produce in that respect. Donna, you are correct. Uh, well, you see, like any businessman, you'd like to sell it for as much as you can. Yeah. But he did tell me, he says, he said, whatever price we agree on, he says, I'll be paying you rent, which you, know, yeah. you want to Mr. take that back the other way. Like, you know, we're trying to get a home for the morgue. Right. And now we're throwing all the sheriff's office and we're throwing the dog office. We, we, we need to focus on getting a home for the morgue and not things that might happen. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. They're already happening, Mitch. We haven't had a flood. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. And at the sheriff's office, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think we're throwing the situation, things this. The situation with the judge has already happened. Okay, I understand that. But and the situation with the sheriff, he's pretty sure that that's going to happen. So are we looking for a home for the morgue or a home for the sheriff? No, we're looking for a home for that's going to best benefit the county. Okay, we're, we're trying that's to be my view holistic about it. So... We want to, it, and, and I, we don't want to end up buying a property and then having to buy another property and another property if we can help it. Yes. So I'm, I'm new on this. Right. I thought at one time we were going to build it more. That was 400000 Yeah, okay. with 110000 to locate the utility. Really? Mm -hmm. and yeah. It just, it got bigger. no as-built. It just kept going. No. Yeah. It got complicated. Uh, it, okay. Yeah. 
And, and it, I haven't um, heard all this, and, and I just knew right. that there was a plan to try to build it here. <clears throat> it, yes, it, part of it's because of um, prevailing wage. I mean, that increased, I think they said 30% of the cost of it. So, I mean, it's just. They also rubbed us a little wrong in Watsika, and this is just my point of view, that we wanted the animal control building where it was at. We had a lot of problems. They kept telling us that we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. And that was in the city of Watsika. We had a little bit of a button with that. But as I've been told, things are changing. Their views are changing now. But that was a little, a little rough. Do you want to put something in, keep it in Watsika, keep it, you know, keep this where we're supposed to be at in Watsika. And that's when we went to Clifton and looked at that place. I, at this point, I don't think we're going to make a decision if, if we're going to go look at some of these. If we're going to go look at them, we should wait. Yeah. Right. I'd love to speak to you when we get a chance to. Yeah, Just and that'll give you a chance up. to ask okay. some questions and get up to speed. And, yeah. So, uh, my purpose is to give you an update on what I've been able to accomplish, which is as much as I'd hope. I need some sense of direction as to what you want me to do going forward. One last. Do you try and negotiate on a price for the place in Watsika or not? Do you want to wait until we? I think it's premature until we look at it. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dukoff. Uh, one last thing. Did we ever get pricing from Clifton finally to find out what everything was going to cost? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give everybody an update on it. I know that was one of the last things we, we worked on. Some of it, but I don't think we have as much okay. as we need. Tw it's the quote was for twenty-eight five, give or take. And. Yeah, 155, and that didn't include the siding. And that's all going to be. Just remember, we always want to compare this apples to apples. That's all I asked. Look at the overall. Personally, if possible, and I say if possible, I would like to see our county buildings stay in Watsika. So um, I don't know. It's just my feeling that it keeps it neater and more compact. I think when we start driving out of town and sending our people on the road, we increase liabilities for different things, we increase costs further, and it's just nice to have a home base, even if it might be six blocks that way or, you know, eight blocks that way or something. Ideally, in a perfect world, it would all be right here on our own acreage, but that's in a perfect world. Okay, so, so let's set a date to go look at it. Well, we'll we'll have to find out when he's available. Well, you were saying something about just going after our next meeting. Well, we had our calendar for the year distributed, didn't we? No, it only goes up to the end of December, I think. So we don't have a new calendar. We have we a new calendar we that was approved last month. I don't have it with me. The calendar that was approved was for county holidays oh, yeah. and county board meetings, yeah. not committee meetings. Okay. The committee meetings only went up to the end of December. Well, we do this all the time. Why, why can't we pick a date? We can pick a no reason you can't. We should. Let's pick a date. I mean, do we want to... So, the second <coughs> Monday when we normally have it, but it's a... Holiday for their employees, so I don't think Amanda wants to come in on her holiday. Who, who else on judicial here? Anybody on judicial? Uh, yeah. Previously, we've met at one o'clock before judicial. Right, because half the people on this were on that, but I don't believe that's the case anymore. Um, yeah, which was the only one right now. Um, what else are you and, and with me up until April, it's going to be hard for me to make some of these committee meetings. I work until 3.30, and I, I can take some time off. But, uh, um, mm -hmm. Unless it's snowing. And then I'm stuck. So... Normally what we would do in the past was we'd move it to Wednesday at 1 o'clock mm -hmm. and then 
have people who go from here to there. And, but well, that's, Wednesday at one o'clock still works for me. Um, the other is it possibility would two days be or the next month. Well, Wednesday. And what day is Wednesday? Thursday. 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 Thursday could probably work as well if you wanted to. I don't think the There's finance that committee meeting will be that long. Yeah. Yeah. As much business in January as they do. What time is that? 9 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. Finance. So Isn't that finance? Yeah. yeah. That's the fifth. Right. Okay. So am I. That's what I was looking at. The okay. two of us would be over. Because if we combine them, if we have them on the same day as another meeting that we're coming, then that saves the county a little money. So January 5th at 10 o'clock? Um, do you want to start the meeting at the building and, and look at it and then come back here and do the... We, we should probably go with 10. Are you going to want to look at both buildings that day or just one? Just the one. Which one are you wanting to look at? Uh, here in town? Unless everybody else wants to go to Crescent City and see that one. I'm going to drive by it. What's the address for that? I'll drive by it. Just right by it. If you go, if you, find the, south. if you find the Casey's gas station and you go south on the street that's on the east side of the gas station, go south. If you, There's a bridge where this drainage just is. If you cross that bridge, you went too far. So the building is on the left-hand side as you're going south on that street. Next to the ditch. Right. It's before you get to the ditch. You can see it when you're looking off to your left. I think I have a friend that lives at the end of that street. I think I can remember your name. And, and what do you say, the construction companies across the street? Yeah, uh, Peter or across the street. Construction? I think he's the guy that built it. What do you plan on doing this? Well, they're talking doing it before the meeting or or after the meeting, after which would be better. Yeah. Do it. Okay, that's fine. After the meeting. Well, yeah, why don't we, because we don't know for sure how long finance is going to be, and then we can have this. And then. So we meet at January 5th at 10 a.m. and then look at the building, right? Is that what you're proposing? After the meeting, yeah, we'll run over there. Okay. You want to look just at the Crescent City one or both of them? I need to know so we can make arrangements. I believe Donna was wanting to look at the Watsika one and several of the others and then do drive by on the others. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to drive by there. So and you do that I... before the meeting then? Yeah. Probably. So we just need to arrange for the one in Watsika. Right. Okay. Unless somebody, you know, if we jump up and go, oh, I really want to see that, somebody called John. You know, that it is still a drawback. I don't care. Um, it is still a drawback to have your offices upstairs, you know. Um, it would be more ideal to have it on the ground floor, too. And I'm not talking just in terms of people going there, but... Mm -hmm. so maybe Ten a.m. Look at the building after. Okay, got it. If anybody wants to look at the one in Crescent City, that I know who the owner is. It's real easy to arrange to do that. Who is Okay. So, anything else we got to cover? Not as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Thank you, John. We got an idea where we're at, and uh, uh, yeah. you know, obviously, maybe between now and the next meeting, two more buildings will pop up. Who knows? But then again, the more the merrier, the more the better we can make a decision on what's best for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, did anybody else have any other questions on either the morgue or the animal control building? Do we want to 
Just take the sign down, paint over it. What? That's fine. I'm, I'm not sure how it's out there. Um, if it's something we can just, you know, take out for now, that'd be fine. Or we can just Did you cover it. To look at it at all. I'll chainsaw it down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's something that you can like pop out or if it's we have to cover it. I mean, just I honestly don't. I don't know. I, I can't picture what it is. I mean, I can picture. I can picture exactly it, but I don't know how it's like, in there. If it's, it's like, just like one solid piece, or isn't it sitting in like a flower box kind of thing? Yeah, it's, it's out there with like the on the two I'll, by I'll fours, and it's got it. like a little frame around it. But I don't know if it's in the frame or if it's all one piece. Why is what don't I'm saying. Just, if possible, why don't we just cover it up? Then, if we want it for future use, yeah, uh, yeah. Our goal, it's there. our goal should be to have a vet in that building. Yeah, I would like that very, very much. The maintenance <laughs> facilities are there, the equipment is there. Very to much. Find a vet to come there, that I think is what we want to do. Whether that same sign would stay if that happens or a different sign, but that will be determined. I'll see about taking it down, but not destroying it to keep it so we can put it right back up. Okay. Okay. How about that? Good man. All right. Anybody got anything else? What? Were okay, I feel like there was Donna, did you have a question about one of the claims? I do. Well, that's right. Okay, there's okay. Sorry. Did I'm everybody just get them emailed or no, we, no. we printed them this time so we know what we did. What did we run the run run the cat six wire in the courthouse for? Phones. Phones. We started the phone project because I gotta get the AT and T bill canceled. Canceling what now? Canceling the bill from AT. I keep trying to cancel it, and we keep finding <laughs> numbers that are connected with okay. ICOM and Sheriff. So I so I had them start that phone project as soon as we could get it started. So they're running that wire now, and that's already been approved for FY twenty three. So, and then you had a question about can't keep small animal animal control. Oh, that's two pickups already, and then the initial account setup. Okay, so that's what I was going to guess. But. Mm -hmm. okay. It would just depend on how many dogs we have at the moment. That in the beginning we probably could have went one pickup a month, but now we're I have six dogs there now, so. Any cats? No, we we still are. Doing really well with eye care and taking most of our cat situation. Mm -hmm. So we did have a foster not too long ago for our mom and cat and kittens, but okay. Looking at contracts, home field energy expired on December first and Amaran expired on December first. Um oh and that was the other question. Kinky disposal was May uh twenty twenty three. We, we had contracts expire? Apparently. They are still giving us the contracted rates, though. Oh. No, they haven't. They usually do. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. We can reach out to them. Well, I think we need to have that on the agenda for Home field energy, Ameren, and disposal too, because that one, yeah, that one will be 2023, May yeah. of 2023. Right, but are they one of them that had it in their contract? Yeah. Yeah. Notified somebody. I, I don't know. Well, yeah, because wouldn't traditionally we have contracts expire on the third August? I mean, energy been, costs yeah. are kind of concerning. Yeah, that's why I don't. I I don't know. We missed that. I don't know why? Yeah, I think we need to get those people in here like ASAP in January. That'll take. That's always a huge one discussion. Yeah, this would be my first. I think a huge one. Well, it, we usually have. But you'll have two different people that come in bringing the contract. Well, we always and you'll have Mansfield and Nike were expiring in 2023 as well. Well, we always have three or four people bidding, and it's always so hard to compare apples to apples in that situation and get the bids. It's a very confusing process. It's almost as confusing as the insurance. 
Yeah, not quite, but a little bit. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody took too long with their report. Yeah. We'll that. <clears throat> and I have one more thing. <clears throat> so move to approve the bills. Okay. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Are there any other questions on the bills? Which building is the bill? Seeing none, take the roll. Bowers? Yes. Stens? Yes. Crow? Yes. Barons? Yes. Okay. Is there any old business? Um, I don't know if it's old business or new business. But I would just like to comment that I liked the previous arrangement of the board with the uh, powers in the front and in the U shape because we could look at one other and another face to face when we when we spoke we could see one another and I thought we were just going to remove these two desks here. And you know, when someone spoke from the podium, we could see them. Um, so, so I are like we, the U shape better. Are, are we bringing this up because the building is under management committee, and so the, <laughs> then we have the ability to change it? Or? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, precisely. Um, I mean, I think talking face to face is always preferable to talking to some, the back of someone's head. You can't see anything from the front row. Without turning around and being at, mm -hmm. uh, in an awkward position. <clears throat> Maybe you should speak face to face with the person that did this. Okay. Well, um, if you're here, come around so I can see you. Anyway, you're in the room. You know, I've expressed my thoughts, the reasons for my thoughts. I think the U shape is nice. And uh, we could all look at one another. So noted. Any other old or new business? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned.